A lot of people don't realize that we use a lot of stem cell therapies for musculoskeletal or orthopedic needs. Now, one of the rich sources in young people of mesenchymal stem cells, just the kind of stem cells that become connective tissue for tendon, joint surface, meniscus, you get the idea. But connective tissue needs or problems that we have in orthopedics, those stem cells can come from the bone marrow. Now, how do we get them out of the bone marrow? It's called bone marrow aspiration. Now, almost all of these treatments need to also be stimulated with platelet-rich plasma. The growth factors that are in the platelets from the platelet-rich plasma drives the stem cells, mesenchymal stem cells, or the connective tissue precursor cells is probably a more accurate phrase, but drives those cells to become the local tissue in which we implant them. So the patient comes in, we draw their blood, centrifuge it down, and prepare a platelet-rich plasma sample. But then the patient comes into a room like this, we lay them out. Now either face up, and we can get from the iliac crest in the front a bone marrow aspirate, or if the patient wants to lie on their side or face down, we can get it from the back. We usually use the bone marrow aspiration from the front because most people are more comfortable lying on their back and face up. What's kind of nice about that for me is I can actually look at the patient and tell if we're making them uncomfortable or if we're causing pain because this is really not a very uncomfortable procedure. Once the patient is in the supine position, we are able to isolate and draw a picture of the iliac crest, a portion of the hip anatomy right on the patient to use for landmarks. We anesthetize that area, and going through the anesthetized area, we're able to put a cannula down within the bone between what are called the inner and outer tables of the hard bone into the soft marrow cavity. And then we are able to withdraw some of that bone marrow. We withdraw about 60 cc's or two ounces, or about this much. We put this in a centrifuge just like we do when we prepare platelet-rich plasma. That separates into the serum on top, which in this case is pink rather than yellow, like it would be for platelet-rich plasma. The red cells on the bottom, and then a buffy coat, which has nucleated or stem cells in it. Now we can isolate that without all the other serum or the rest of the red cells. At that point, we'll take the patient back to the fluoroscopy suite if it's into a joint, or right here at the table side, we'll do the injection under ultrasound control if it's not into the joint itself. We'll also combine that with the platelets from the platelet-rich plasma. As the platelets rupture and die and their growth factors hit those stem cells, they have a way to signal those stem cells to become the local tissue that's needed through signaling proteins between those cells. Unfortunately, the platelets die in about 30 days. But the stem cells are still alive and working for at least 12 to 14 weeks. So for most patients who aren't pain-free at the end of that month, they'll come back and we'll do just the blood procedure, the platelet-rich plasma again, so the platelets and their growth factors will continue to drive the process of not only cellular differentiation, which means the cells, the stem cells become the local tissue cells, but also causes those new local tissue cells to proliferate or grow new colonies or grow more tissue that is needed during the healing process. I hope this cutting edge view into the future of orthopedic medicine has been beneficial.